Hello everyone, this is Shakura Zohe Kyoku aka Chikomens and welcome back to Let's Play of Teachers with Love and Passion. In the last playthrough, we have finished kind of path or at least the reverberation of the start of Marcus Sprout, which are the differences that it will be from Learner Sprout, just minor things. And kind of a um, major scope of all the scenes that you were supposed to see when uh, you play through the routes. So we saw that, so we had the option to skip through that. And then we moved on to a major part of Marcus route, which is kind of different from Learner. So I haven't seen the problem of this route yet. Like for example, Learners is Oh, it's kind of spoilerish, isn't it? But if you watched my videos, you will saw Leonor's route first before seeing this. So, so gonna put some spoilers in here. The general gist is there is a kind of secret that Leonor's is impressed to tell Anna about, and so that caused a lot of misunderstanding and stuff. Uh, they got along after that, after revealing his secrets, in a sense. So, well then, we'll see their kind of peak for Marcus Rock this time. I wonder what it is. Let's go. It's break time, and I'm alone in my classroom, taking care of messy papers all over my desk. I have so much to do. I didn't even check the homework from last week. Stay in the classroom or go to the teacher's lounge? I wonder. So, since we haven't finished things, we might as well stay in the classroom and finish up everything before doing anything. I guess it won't kill me to work a little bit during my break. I may not be happy with this decision. But I know it's the best one to avoid working overtime for another night. Sitting back, I stretch my body before going back to work. After a long day at work, I finally hit the couch. It's nighttime. I have my dinner in the microwave and the TV turned on a rainbow show. On my lap, their students' assignments are judging me as I try my best to keep my mind in place to focus on it. Hmm? A message from Marcus? Hey. Hello. I just wanted to thank you for earlier. You really didn't have to bring back to me. So, thank you. Uh, you must be busy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Wait! What? Now what? Uh, do I want to say something? Uh, why am I so nervous? He is just my friend. What's wrong with me? I'm glad to be helpful. Anna, thank you for messaging. Uh, I gotta go. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Marcus. Good night. I don't think I'm hungry anymore. There are too many butterflies filling my stomach already. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is wrong with me? Copying my face and my hands, I throw myself back on the couch, holding back the urge to scream like an emperor's teenager. I guess I'm not working on these nerds tonight. <laughs> Would you like to skip Eric's intro? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, we can skip that. Okay, yes, let's do it. I wonder why though. Why why would you have this option to skip Eric's intro? Is the question. But yes. 
Bye, Eric. You're cute, but bye. <laughs> I had some urgent matters to deal with before going to my classroom, so I decided to come to work earlier today. In the administration office, I'm reading an old document, wondering what I need to do about it. Uh, excuse me? A curious, cautious voice calls out to me in front of the counter. I look up to find a tall, envious man looking at me with a faded smile on his face. Oh, what a handsome man, and he looks so young too, wow. Is this... I am very sure we haven't seen him before. I haven't seen him before, so I'm assuming he is a student's older brother or maybe a new trainee. Putting a smile on my lips, I do my best to welcome him. Good morning, may I help you? Yes. My name is Peter. I'm Josh Fatter. Oh, oh wow, oh wow, Fatter, he looks so young, what? Fatter? For a moment, I let the shock of hearing such a word coming out from such a young face get the best of me. Luckily, the man doesn't take it as an insult and instead of getting mad at me, he smiles, shyly. Trying to mask my terrible reaction, I rub my cheek, avoiding his eye contact. Yes, I came here last month when my son fell sick. He has a stomachache. Oh. Is he talking about the same kid I helped on my first week? Didn't the other ladies tell you anything about it? Eh? No. Josh is not in my class, so I didn't know what happened. You are a teacher? Yes, I am. Oh, sorry. Now it's his turn to feel embarrassed for overreacting. Understanding his pain, I brush it off with the same smile from before. I thought you worked in this department. Oh gosh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> it's okay. I think we both had wrong first impressions of each other. You're right, huh? <laughs> but even if I don't work here, I am still willing to do my best to help you. Thank you. Uh, so my kid got sick again yesterday, and I think I need to talk to the VE teacher about it. Uh, his last statement was enough to take the smile off my face. Memories from the day Christy had an issue with a parent come back to my mind. My heart sinks in my chest just thinking about someone yelling at Marcus. I closed my fist under the counter, hesitating to move. But he told me it was the food. It has nothing to do with Marcus, so what does he want to talk about with him? <sighs> I'm getting mad at a man I don't know because I'm worried about a fight that didn't happen. What is wrong with me? You just care about him very much. <sighs> I think I just don't want Marcus to be sad. Uh, miss? Ah, sorry. I'll check if he is here today. Thank you. Since I don't think it would be polite to just send the man home, I decide to go back to the teacher's lounge. And maybe come up with an excuse so I can spare Marcus from this mess. As if laughing at my face, fate makes me meet an inescapable end. The first person I see inside the lounge is Marcus. He and Leonard are chatting about something that got both of them rolling their eyes. They turn their attention to me as soon as they notice me walking inside with a guilty expression. Morning, Anna. Morning, guys. What's wrong? You look worried. Uh, Marcus, are you busy? Uh, no. I have one hour free before my next period. Uh, I wish you didn't say that. Why? There is a man in the administration office wanting to talk to you. 
Uh, he said he is Josh's father. Oh, great. What did you do? What? I didn't do anything. Uh, I can tell him you are not here. I'm here to back you up. I don't want him to go. But I know that anything I do will only postpone the problem. This is going to be annoying. I'm here to back you up if things get too complicated. Uh, you can tell me to stay on your side and punch him. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you got sued. You will get sued, Hannah. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, an, an interesting idea, though. <laughs> what? Christy taught you that, didn't she? <laughs> hey. Thanks, but I can't handle it. Okay. Hey, don't worry. Things I just can't ruin my day. Yeah, I know. Good luck. He walks out. Leaving Leonard and me behind. I take a deep breath, trying to make the air in my lungs push away the heavy feeling in my chest. Don't worry, Hannah. He knows how to handle guys like that. I know, but I don't think it is fair for him to take the blame. Ray told me it was the kid's fault. Uh, he shouldn't have to deal with it in the first place. Look at their brother's eye. What sign? If Marcus feels bad about it, you can comfort him later. Oh, they're not nose! They're not nose! <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's very obvious, huh? Why, Leonard? Uh, why are you the windman this time, though? I, not that I don't appreciate the help, but wow, Leonard. Oh my gosh, Leonard. Interrupting Leonard's thesis, the door opened suddenly, surprising us both to see Eric standing there. Um, oh, oh dear, oh, oh dear. Eric, sweetie, even though I love your face and you look very cute, but, but there's no chance. <laughs> the, the problem is that there's no chance to romance you, so seeing you is kind of dangerous. Hey, Eric. What brings you here? Hi, uh, I... Not much. Eh? Doesn't look like that. Did something happen? Hmm, maybe. Uh, Miss Fine, can I talk to you in private? Right now? Yes. Hmm, I don't know. My class is about to start. It won't take too long. Mm. Go with him or wait in the lounge? Yeah, no, I'm going to wait in the lounge because you're gonna be a good support for Marcus in case anything happens. Sorry, Eric. Uh, it's okay. You can catch me at lunch. I promise I'll make time only for you. <laughs> that would be great. I'll wait for it, Miss Fi. Then I'll see you later. Sure. I'm not happy for not helping him, but it's good to see him living with a smile on his face. Hmm. What's wrong? I can't say why, but this boy gives me a weird feeling. That's a good sense of feeling, Leonard. Of course, of course. What? He is such a good kid. Yes, he is a good kid if he's not yandere for you and his route is not available in the sense like that, then drastic thing may happen. And more and more, you're not uh, interested in him and you're not and you're interested in someone else. Yeah, double, double the problem. <laughs> I know. 
I see him working all the time, but there's something. Uh, Leonard, don't tell me you are jealous of him. Jealous? <laughs> are you worried that he may take your place on baby face? I mean, he has a Leonard has a cute baby face. <laughs> uh, Hannah. I can't believe you are telling me this. You didn't answer me. <laughs> That's not it. Oh, I can't wait to tell Edgar about this. The door opens once again, but this time it surprises us to see Marcus back so soon. Anna, come with me. Eh? Why? Eh? I look at Eleanor. I mean, what? What? <laughs> they just butchered the name. What? <laughs> I look at Leonard, searching for answers, but he only gives me his shoulders, lost at the same dead end as me. Troubled and with no option, I ran after Marcus. Suddenly, I'm back at the office from before, looking at Peter's face once again. Hello again. Hi. So this is Miss Fine. It was her that felt Josh sick in the hallway that day. So you should thank her. Eh? Josh told me about a nice mess in the nurse's office, but I thought he was talking about a doctor. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I took him there. You saved my son. What? After that day, he fell sick again. I took him to the hospital and we found out that he has a small issue in his stomach. What? Is he okay? Yes, it isn't serious, but we need to treat it as soon as possible to avoid it developing into the worst stage. I see. It means he won't be able to overwork his body. It means he won't be able to overwork his body, right? Yes, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Oh. The surprise can be heard in my voice as much as it can be seen in my face. However, inside me, I feel reassurance. I take a glance to my right, but then Marcus look at me, looking at me. His weak smile is proof that he's been watching my reactions from the start and he is as happy about this situation as I am. Don't worry, Mr. Storm. George can be excused from my classes, but he still needs to attend school. Of course. Now that I met you too, I know I have nothing to be worried about. George is in good hands. You bet. Ah, what the? This is a nice parent, actually. Well, uh, uh, well, in this situation, we haven't found anything um, unreasonable about him so far, so I'll, I'll, I'll judge him as a nice parent. You bet. Miss Fine may not be his teacher, but she is always looking after all of us. <sighs> we are all lucky to have her here. I'm embarrassed and happy and confused. And it all is happening at once. It's not fair. How can he say such a thing with that pretty smile on his face without giving me a warning? It's called unconsciously being spooked, Hannah. <laughs> now I'm mailed in here and I can't even pay attention to what Peter is saying. Marcus took the lead of the conversation and made sure that father left satisfied before he could go back to work. Nice. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> Everyone left after lunch while I stayed behind to wait for the next class. Since there was nothing for me to do, I decided to take advantage of my time to sort out the things in my locker. It's been weeks since I started working, and yet I have nothing inside this thing. I should bring my own books here. I wouldn't feel so boring if I had a good reading with me. Hmm. 
I told him, but you know, Edgar. He won't stop bothering me until I lose my mind. <laughs> he is so bothersome. Sometimes I wish he would act his age. I hear Edgar's name. I hear Jabo. You got it. Good afternoon, Miss Fine. You are late for lunch. Did something happen? Yes, I had to give a lecture to a few bad students, so I could avoid being stuck in my classroom. Same. Sorry about that. How about you? Oh, I'm just waiting for my shift. I'm asking about lunch. Have you eaten already? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Don't skip your meals. It's bad for your health. Ah,、uh, he sounds like a mother. A super cute mother. <laughs> Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> super cute though. Well, a super cute and buff mother, I guess. <laughs> But I think that's cute. Yeah, the the more I, I yeah. Instead of being grumpy, Marcus is considered cute now. <laughs> ah, the weather is changing again. It's going to rain soon. I hope you are wrong. Eh? You don't like rainy days? That's not it. I left my laundry hanging outside. Ah,、uh, oof. And I'll be very pissed if it gets wet. Oh no. How about you, Mister Henson? Do you like rainy days? I don't mind it, but if I have to choose a favorite, I would say that I quite enjoy the cold ones. Winter is a great season. Well, I mean, winter is not bad, but it's very cold. I myself don't like the real like cold weather in a sense. It's fine if it's just kind of cool. But not like cold to the point of freezing or snowing. Well, that's is super cold. I like the cool weather. Yes, that is the best weather for me, in my opinion. For the cold-hearted. <laughs> oh, oh my! I see. Are you nuts? Summer is the best season. How about autumn, where everything is in the middle of that? <laughs> Ah,、uh, sunny days are the worst. Have you ever tried working on a hot day? It's disgusting. Yeah, sure, because gym classes are so much fun on a snowy day. Guys, really? What? Don't you agree with me, Hannah? Eh? She caught Peter Stewart. Say, Miss Fine, what is your opinion on it? Oh no! Don't drag me in it. Too late. <laughs> yes, too late. I guess. <laughs> Just answer it. Ah. Now let's run. Well, I could, I could do that and taunt both them, or、uh, both are okay. Both are okay. Okay, I'm going ahead. Go ahead and save that. Uh, I think Bob are gay. Hmm. Clever. I am. Either way, it doesn't change the fact that I am bright. Huh? Who says? I'm saying. Stop fighting, you two, and just eat your lunch. They didn't stop yelling at each other, but at least they were eating while doing it. <laughs> That's a cute interaction in a sense, though. <laughs> With the heat getting into the heads, we all forgot the point of starting this discussion. Ignoring the sky turning gray outside the windows. Our last classes were canceled due to an energy drop on the first floor. The kids were sent home earlier, and I'm about to do the same. Standing at the school's entrance, I watched the rainfall.
regretting leaving home without an umbrella with me. Will I be in trouble if I run to the bus stop? I don't want to get sick. Eh? Hey. Oh, hi. Were your classes cancelled too? Yeah, but not so enough to avoid the rain. Oh no, your laundry. Yes. It is what it is. I'll swallow the pain and clean it all over again tonight. I'm sorry. Marcus takes a deep breath, shaking his head to get rid of the house where Hunter has mine. I know it is a painful situation, but I can't help but the smile on the corner of my lips. His soaking face is cute too. Everything about him is cute. I turn my face back to the street, watching the calm road reflecting the troughs echoing around us. It's so quiet. <clears throat> I turn my gaze to his side, finding a man too busy in his own thoughts. Marcus' impenetrable eyes watch the rain like a drought lost in fantasy words. So peaceful, so close to me. His mind seems to be far away making me wonder where it is going to land. He turns me just as serious as he has always been. It's a shame that my heart can't keep the same seriousness as I look back at him. I hate this. I hate that I can't read his face, and I hate that I don't understand what I'm feeling when I look into his eyes. He doesn't say anything, but I notice his head tilted to the side, scanning my surroundings. Where is your umbrella? Oh, uh, I didn't bring it. Uh. Uh, I didn't know it was going to rain. Yeah, but you could have left one in your locker just in case. Oh. Just to be safe, you know. That's it. Hmm. So, uh, are you planning to stay here until the rain is over? I guess. Or, or else I'll have to run to the bus stop. Hmm. I'll take you there. Eh? Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of space for two people under my umbrella. Ooh, umbrella sherry, umbrella sherry. Ooh, we're so romantic. Oh my, it feels like high school and love over again. You know, that cliche scene when two people who are in love with each other, or at least or a couple share an umbrella together. Very romantic. <laughs> mm -hmm. He takes a step further on the entrance, unfolding it, not waiting for my answer. I watch him, unable to say anything, as I feel my heart drop to my stomach. He holds the handle closer to his chest, turning his gaze to the floor as he tries his best to keep a serious expression under his red cheeks. Come on. I don't want to cause you trouble. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Slightly embarrassed, he nods, waiting for me to come closer. I walk under it, trying my best to keep a distance between our bodies. Thank you. Our walk is silent and slow, distant but close. Huge drops hit the material above our heads. Loud beasts pelt in my heartbeats. Suddenly, Marcus takes a step closer. I look at him, biting his blushing face averting his eyes above me. If you stand too far, you will get wet. He whispers near my ear. My body is burning, but my skin is cold. I feel like dying inside at the same time that I feel the most alive. I stare at the floor, trying to hide my red face from my side. My shoulder rubs against his arm, making my heart throb, and my hands hold tighter together in shame. I wish the time could stop right now. I will live forever in this messy feeling, forgetting about the whole world around us. But it won't happen. The bus stop appears around the corner of our eyes as we get closer to it. 
I still don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> At the bus stop, Marcus folds his umbrella, standing next to me. Somehow, I feel like we are both avoiding looking at each other. As I am being swallowed by my thoughts, I hear him muttering a painful moan under his breath. What's wrong? My shoulder is hurting. Shoulder is making aches more than usual. Eh? Did you hurt it? Yeah. Did you go to a doctor? Uh, wait, you you don't know who I am. What do you mean? You are Marcus, right? Uh, a PE teacher. Yeah, but I mean, aside from that, I don't know what you are talking about. Ah. Uh, Huh? Why am I so surprised? Of course, you don't know. You wouldn't be near me if you knew it. What? It's yours. Yeah, but then I'll see you tomorrow. Uh... Bye. Not giving me the time to say anything, Marcus turns his back to me, walking through the rain. I see, I see that peak now, that twist in the peak. I wonder what happened. My lips part, begging silently for him not to go. However, he doesn't look back, not even once. What did I do wrong? Holding my cold body, I step into the bus. The night is colder and the rain hasn't stopped yet. Sitting on the couch, I listen to the train drops hitting my window as I look up to my ceiling. The talks are loud tonight. Marcus' face close to mine, our bodies touching, and that unfinished conversation. What was that supposed to mean? I took a shower as soon as I came home to wash away the cold on my skin. But it's been hours, and I'm still feeling hot. In an attempt to distract myself from these thoughts, I take my cell phone from the table. What? A message from Marcus two hours ago is shining on my screen. Please forget what I said. Uh, did I say something wrong? But what was I supposed to say? Uh. I don't get it. Since a few days ago, I just can't stop thinking about him. Now I'm worried about losing the bond we have created. I put my phone down and roll back on the couch. Closing my eyes in an attempt to sleep, I allow the swirl of feelings takes over my chest. And that should be a good pause for all day two of teachers with love and passion. Marcus wrote. So we have a lot of events that happened today. First, we have a parent to a boy that we had helped to the doctor's office, and we found out what happened later on. So he, the boy, little boy, had a little problem with his stomach, but it was on time, so nothing serious has happened. And the parents was just there to ask the PE teacher to let the boy skip his class. Instead of complaining or anything, as Hannah and Marcus has suspected, so it's worked out very well. And next is Eric's kind of learner's kind of uncomfortable feeling about Eric. Yeah, he's very sharp about these things. Good job, learner. Good job. But、um, at least this time, Eric's haven't. Threatened us so far, so、uh, so far so good, right? <laughs> wait, 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 wait.、Um, I smell a potential of that threat regarding Marcus, since that because of that、um, event happened in next is that the rain. There was a rain, and we share kind of the cliche romantic sharing umbrella. Very romantic, very lovely. And Hannah is definitely feeling hot under the weather. 
even though it's kind of cool too. <laughs> so there was something strange at the end. The twist, the peak that we are have searching for. Marcus passed. What had him done in the past that brought his injury on the shoulder? And what he thought that if she knew about it, she would hate him or dislike him or something like that. I wonder what. And I'm excited to know what happened next in the next video, of course. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.